It's just like, just be who you are. Mm. Um, be who you are, be the best version of yourself. Like you don't need to be more or anything different. Just, just be who you are. Mm. And, and you're here for a reason and just continue to play. And if you're healthy, go out and perform. Everything will take care of itself. On today's episode of Show and Go with X, we have Mets first baseman Pete Alonso. He discusses the emotions that go behind his final year with the Mets before hitting free agency. He talks about his approach at the plate and the process he thinks about before he swings. And then finally, he gives us the secrets to his power and where it all comes from. Show and Go with X starts now. Pete Alonzo, welcome to Show and Go, my guy. Thank you. Um, we're gonna get right into it. We don't waste to waste any time. Going into a season to where after the season you could be a free agent. Um, what what is satisfying about knowing that you've put in all the work that has allowed you to get to this point to where you'll have an opportunity to be the, either extended or mm-hmm. get to free agency? What's what's satisfying about that? Um, just the. Uh... Again, like I, I'm just really, really thankful because we've, um, my my wife and I, we've been welcomed by open arms uh, from not just uh, the organization mm-hmm. uh, from day one, but uh, as well in the big leagues, the city has welcomed us with open arms. And yeah. right now in New York, I mean, it feels like home and like being with the Mets, it feels like family. So um, it, it's it's really a special place. And getting to now at this point, it's, I, it's really, phenomenal because mm-hmm. there, like you said, there's a lot of hard work, but uh, hard work without execution and performing in the big leagues, like that's that's paramount and it's really hard to do. And um, I feel like I've done that at a, a pretty, pretty good, I've done a good job with executing and performing. And uh, here we are, uh, this is entering the six, my sixth season. It's, <laughs> time flies, man, time flies. Well, I think that's what's cool about being able to talk to you is like, you've gotten to the point to where you've shown consistency at the big league level from day one, basically. And I think that's what's really tough. I know from uh, as playing, it's not easy to be able to be as consistent as you've been. But what is the tougher part about going into this season? Is there any, I guess we talk about this word pressure, about going into a free agent year after this. Is there any pressure there or any of the idea that, okay, I got to perform to a different level. No, 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 no. I think the the number one thing uh, talking with uh, some veterans is uh, like, so having Max Scherzer, uh, Justin Verlander, uh, and also um, ultra veteran veterans like Robbie Cano in, in years past. Mm-hmm. It's like the, the number one thing that they have always preached, like going into my rookie year and every step of the way through, they're just like, just be who you are. Mm. Um, be who you are, be the best version of yourself. Like you don't need to be more or anything different. Just, just be who you are. Mm. And, and you're here for a reason and just continue to play. And if you're healthy, go out and perform. Everything will take care of itself. And Mm. that's, that's the number one thing. That's the number one thing. Be who you are. Yeah, that's good. And I think that like having those types of influences to be able to help you learn those things along the way at an early age, I think that's huge, right? Because Unless we are are given that information, it's hard for us to really navigate that ourselves sometimes. Um, yeah, and I think that's that that's important. But let me ask you about New York a little bit. What is it that you love about New York? What is it that just makes New York home at this point? Um, I'm gonna say just the the energy, uh, the energy of the city, the energy of the stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like playing in a city like New York. Like there's no bigger stage and. Um, uh, New York's iconic. It's a it's a really special place, and to be able to navigate the not just the the yes, there's challenges, but to also handle uh, the failures and also the success. It's mm-hmm. it's a it's a different beast. But I'll tell you what, every everything about New York, it's it's incredibly special. There's just energy, and it's just iconic. It's 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 such an honor to play there. That's and one thing I love is the food. Like, yeah, it's of course. Like, it's hard not to love the food out there yeah. and, and be able to have whatever you want to choose from. Right. Um, a little bit of uncertainty, maybe going into this season as far as the team as a whole, right? New new manager, new president of operations. Mm-hmm. Does any of that, I guess, um, 
give you uh, uncertainty for you or is it just like, hey, I just need to focus on myself or how, how's the mentality around that? So uh, it's last year, it's interesting, like we had s so much talent, but we didn't have everybody on the field at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we missed uh, we missed uh, having uh, Quintana for the first half yeah. of the year. Uh, JV was out for the first, I would say, five weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, Max uh, was on and off, like, and also too, we had two uh, suspensions, mm -hmm. um, and we were pitching for, and our bullpen was stretched thin uh, for basically a whole month of the season, then losing losing sugar. So it's like we mm -hmm. had this, and not having Starling. Mm -hmm. um, so like there was like we just needed to be healthy and stay on the field. I feel like we have great amount of talent um i feel like that we're gonna um i, I feel like we have a, a great group of guys i'm excited to get to know these guys yeah. and it's gonna be it's gonna be a great camp and um i i mean first and foremost it's creating that chemistry mm. and also too like no one's gonna win a world series like first day of spring training and right. <laughs> it's a it's a long it's a, it's it's a long time to even get to april one or when right. or march 20 8th or 27th, whenever opening day is. And then it's a long day to September 29th at yeah. the end of the year. And it's a journey. And um, yeah, if we can be health, I mean, health is wealth. Right, right. Health is wealth. Yeah. We need to be healthy. And once we have our horses on the field, like I, I feel like we can do some damage. Yeah, I'm excited about a guy. You talked about chemistry. Someone that you probably have chemistry with already is Harrison Bader, now joins mm -hmm. your team, center fielder. You guys played together at Florida. What right. does it mean to have somebody that you – played with in college you guys you know getting to the college world series getting deep a couple times yeah how how is it having someone like him on the on the squad now so it's it's phenomenal because bader was so helpful um he was my locker mate he hosted me on my official visit mm -hmm. uh when i when i came in high school and he's he's a really special human being he's a i think he's a fantastic player and he's um i mean he's he's a Again, I, I can't say enough great things yeah. about him, but he's going to be a, a huge, huge, um, excellent addition for us. I'm, I'm really excited to see how he molds and um, impacts the team in a positive way yeah. because he's he's a really dynamic player and he can help us a ton. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited because of the energy he brings to the always. to the stadium, and he's always like playing with his hair on fire. He's always smiling. Yes, and I think that's kind of a little theme amongst a lot of you guys, as far as a core. Right. Lindor as well, yep. you as well. All you can see the passion within the players. I even think about Francisco Alvarez back yep. there, um, who's obviously had a great year last year. So I'm excited to see what you guys do as a core and and what you guys continue to do. Absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, adding Bader to the mix i mean it's not just adding talent it's, it's per adding personalities where you can uh pause posi positively feed off of mm. each other and i feel like that bader's really gonna really gonna help out like it's like we had a, a great clubhouse last year despite mm. all the all the difficulties that that we went through uh and trials and tribulations yeah. but the boys stay together we had a great clubhouse and that's one thing that we we really take pride in uh, with our with our team and our organization mm -hmm. is having a, having that great chemistry and um, this year we're gonna like from day one that's that's gonna be a huge uh, focal point for us and uh, we're gonna go out there and I mean work hard together and as a group yeah there, there's a couple of things I wanted to touch on with you because I feel like you do a great job whether you notice it or not but almost this idea of, of kind of branding yourself and, and marketing yourself and, and using your voice and your platform as a player. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Homers for Heroes, an amazing thing that you do. Um, Battle of the Bay here, uh, an event yeah. that you put on down here. Uh, but I want to know kind of from a personality standpoint, what what allows you to say, okay, I, I want to put myself out there a little bit. I want to do some of these things, help the community. And because not everybody is like that as a player. A lot of guys just want to focus on what they have to do yeah. and just get better on a day to day basis. But you seem to be all around in that sense. Oh, I, I feel that um, having a platform uh, is really important, mm -hmm. uh, especially where I'm at. And I want to use it for, for good. And I want to... Um, and that, that's why my wife and I, we, we started our foundation. Like we were just like, we have a platform, we have a super influential and strong mm -hmm. voice, especially in, especially in New York and in Tampa. Yeah. Um, yeah, we just want to create, um, 
positivity and give back to the communities that have uh, supported and helped us so much along the way. No, and and also like the the animals too. Like you, yeah. you guys are really conscious about giving back to you know and, and care a lot about mm -hmm. animals and dogs and whatnot. So what has kind of led you to that as well? Well, we've uh, we've rescued two dogs ourselves. Mm. Uh, we recently uh, fostered a, a third dog and um, and adopted her out. So yeah, this year we're going to be um, taking a huge initiative mm. on. Uh, getting rescue dogs out of kill shelters, yeah. um, whether it's foster families or forever homes. So like our goal is, um, is to pay for transport supplies. Um, well that's, I mean, dog cages, mm -hmm. food, um, I mean, medical procedures like spaying and neutering. That's um, cool. yeah, we're going to be, our goal is to save about, or hopefully over 200 dogs out of kill shelters this wow. year. So yeah, that's, that's a huge initiative. Like we've also done stuff, uh, in New York, helping out families impacted by 9-11. Mm -hmm. Now it's more 9-11 um, related illnesses um, and helping out families, uh, whether that be medical bills or um, anything of that nature. And yeah. also um, we've done stuff with military and we wanna give back to the kids obviously as well. So we, we try and stay dynamic and give back wherever we can. From a, from a player standpoint, how do you, I guess, balance kind of the, the requests, like media requests. Obviously, you got a lot going on off the field. Is it is it tough to balance those types of things or is it something that's kind of come natural to you? And how do you go about that? Oh, I mean, it's, uh, I think the balance, that's a really, <laughs> it's a funny, it's a funny Is word. there balance? <laughs> there's, there's not really, it, it, I mean, it depends on what kind of the year and you have to, obviously, like playing and, and going out there performing yeah. is, um, yeah, I mean, that's number, that's number two. Number one is all, always family. And Ooh. then it's, there's, you, you always just have to prioritize the, the number, number one thing, like family first and then, uh, then work, yeah. which is, which is going out there performing and then, uh, give back wherever we can. So I, we just want to give, uh, all we can, uh, whenever we can. So like, we just want to make the most of all the time that we have. I love that. I love that, man. And you talk about priority is kind of family and performing. I want to take you to the screen so we can talk about your performance Do it. a little bit. Let's do it. Um, and get right into it. Obviously, okay. everybody everybody loves the power. And we're going we're gonna to get to that, okay? But first, I want to get into something that I know you take pride in. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the defensive side of things. Here you are with Ron Washington. Right. Everybody talks about this clip a lot. Yes. Right, because he's one of the best when you talk about infield um, coaches. But I know you've had other influences. I know Joey Corr is important in, yeah. in that influence as well. Where's the pride um, come from and who's been influential in that pride and in, in that defensive side? Well, I've always been incredibly uh, prideful of like, I want to be a complete baseball player. Yeah. Like, and I know like for me, like being a good base runner, that doesn't necessarily mean stealing a lot of bases. Mm -hmm. That means being able to go first to third, reading reading throws, scoring from second uh, with two outs, and or even taking an extra base when uh, someone's being a little lax out there. Yeah. Um, and also here, like for me, learning from Wash, like there's like there's different perspectives from different coaches. Like Joey was super awesome, right? Like with footwork around the bag, and mm -hmm. and also like certain um, or even like certain drop steps and and certain first moves to get in position to field. But right. uh, the one thing that Wash um, said is like, not just attacking the baseball, but how do you attack it? It's like anticipating hops and, and meeting the ball, mm. um, meeting the ball before it ha has a chance to right. take a bad, bad hop. And like his perspective is um, a little different than Joey's and Joey's is different than his, but mm. like, that's what makes um, really special because learning from excellent people in the game. And then also my, uh, my first infield coach, Gary D. Sarcina, mm. super positive, yeah. uh, impact. And, um, and the one thing that he always said is like, listen, where do you want to be on the last side of the world series? Like, do you want to be a defensive replacement in the seventh or eighth inning? Hmm. Or do you want to be holding the ball, putting the ball in your back pocket like Rizzo? Yeah. So That's like good. there's different mentalities, there's different little gold nuggets. Um, 
And also, too, we're talking defense. I'm gonna, I got a huge shout out to uh, Tim Tuffle, mm-hmm. who really helped me take some strides uh, in the minor leagues to get huh. to get me big league ready. And as a ball player, just want to keep evolving and yeah. keep getting better every day. Well, I think one of the things that you mentioned is kind of like being able to take different pieces from different guys, right? And yeah. be able to evolve your own game. And I yep. think that's the most important thing is is not being closed off to just one specific style or one specific type type of way to do it. And I think that's important for young athletes to know, but also like professional players. Like, hey, mm-hmm. I can't just be so focused on I got it the right way. No, let me learn from these different guys and kind of create my own routine. So I love that for aspect sure. of it, man. Yeah. I love that. Um, let's let's get into let's get into the swinging side of things. Right. Um, we bring up the spray chart. I got, for some reason, 2021 is in the middle and 2022 is over here and we have 2023. Um, we, we start to, I guess, and it may not be your mentality, but I feel like the mentality is now poolside power, right? right. Get to your poolside power. Make sure you get it to an opportunity where you can drive the balls to the poolside. What is your mentality when you look at your own spray chart or just your focus as to what you're trying to do at looking at the whole field? So I... I always want to tell younger kids or even other people like pulled side pull side homers are just mistakes by the pitcher Mm. so or just getting your getting your max power those homers are thrown they're not they're not hit right um yes you want to get get in a really good hitting position on a consistent basis but homers are accidents where you just have a great swing and the pitcher made a perfect pitch read it to to do the job so um granted like I think there are plenty of opportunities uh, to hit homers that are the, are are just the the swing and misses or yeah dang I just fouled that back mm-hmm. or I mean if you look, watch a major league baseball game there's so many pitches right down the middle whether you're not anticipating it you didn't see it like there are plenty of opportunities out there it's just the consistency of capitalizing yeah and just like. I, I think I was talking to Kyle Tucker when we were having the same kind of type of discussion. Mm-hmm. It's just like being ready for that that mistake yep. and, and being able to do damage with it. Yep. And I think one thing I appreciate about your game too is you're not afraid to drive the ball the other way because you know you have the pop to be able to do so. Right. So even here, um, let's look at 2023, so yeah. recent year. So if you look here, so it's – there's homers everywhere. It's yeah. not just over here. Even right. 2021, 2022, there's still a, a, a focus of using big part of the field. Like you can see here. Yes, that right are, center gap. Yep, even last year, like there's still that huge focus where we're still working towards the, the big part of the field. Mm-hmm. And home runs are just results of, uh, are, of just a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Did you see anything – I guess, different when the defensive shift came into play at all yeah. for, for you personally. Yeah. So I actually kind of liked having the shift because <laughs> there would be balls that I would just get absolutely blown up on, like in on my hands or that would just dribble through the right side. Mm. So if you look here, these are all like just l- little shift beaters. And obviously those are phenomenal and you feel <laughs> great after those. So <laughs> this year with when there's a second baseman, playing right here yes uh like traditional in a traditional baseball sense right. i didn't really get any of those like nubby little broken bat singles that are are hit 60 miles an hour through the four holes so um making that adjustment and also too i felt like pitchers did an excellent job of of tunneling this year mm. i didn't i had a really tough time with making, against you personally right um I, I, or just in general, too. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I thought pitchers did an excellent job. I mean, analytics are getting wild, like more and more advanced scouting reports mm-hmm. and the, the new wave of kids coming up where it's like now, like you get like your middle reliever, everyone's throwing 97, 98, and yeah. they know how to to make start the, the slider and the fastball in the same, same plane spot. until the last minute. So yeah. I just the game, it's, it's growing at a rapid pace. And this offseason, I've been really focused on – making that adjustment and trying to make. Well, yeah, I was going to ask you about going into this off season. How do you focus on making that adjustment? Is it something more focused on swing? Is it more focused on, let me get off the machine? Is it more, can I see live pitching? What is that? How do you go into the off season trying to uh, make adjustments? So right now I'm in the process of creating um, sustainable efficiency. So Mm. that's creating smaller moves, which 
allows me to see the ball a mm. little bit longer, split second longer, okay. which ultimately hitting is the best hitters make the best swing decisions. Mm -hmm. So it's just giving myself more time, uh, creating smaller movements so I can track maybe like just a hair longer so, so I can see everything. Show me, show me what that small movement that you're doing now might look like. Oh, you can, uh, so you can scroll. Um, so watch, if you watch here. Okay. So I'm it. probably doing a much better job in batting practice. Okay. So it's real here. He hit play. Go ahead. Yep. So watch this. So I'm, uh, that's what I'm working on right now. Hmm. But emphasizing. Now let's go to the game. Okay. Let's watch this front foot. The game. So if you, he's controlling my screen, by the way, I love it. I love it. So uh, this play. is probably what. Okay. This is a see if we can get see if we can get halfway. I can, there we go. Let's get halfway here. So watch how high this foot is in the game. Okay. I'm going, going. See how high that is and how long that stride is? Yeah. Um, si go back. Sick result of a homer. But if you're here. Pause it. Okay. So, so technically, this was an, I mean, this is a change up. Probably down, down. I think this is off of Rogers. Yes. Um, but my foot, there's a lot of like travel here. So there's a lot. So my foot here, I'm in my stance. Yeah. So it's like here, even though it's not raised a ton. Sorry, excuse my Birkenstocks. No, you're good. <laughs> so my foot is here and I'm traveling a little bit. I saw this pitch really well, but this foot should be on the ground longer. Mm. So. Right here, I'm planted in the ground, and then also my foot turns over. So the one guy who I'm trying... So you're, you're saying your foot turns over... Yeah, my foot turns over like that, right? Exactly like that. Right. So the whole thing, it's like I want to be as planted and firm in the ground, so it's like almost like I'm here, and then it's almost like, a, like once that heel hits the ground, it's like pulling the trigger on a gun. It's like, mm. bam, everything unwinds and flows through with good direction. And there's no heel turn. There's no heel turnover. I want to be planted firmly in the ground at all times and using the ground to my advantage. Right. So, a guy who does a wonderful, wonderful job of this, and this is a no shit statement, mm -hmm. uh, is JD Martinez. Right, does a phenomenal job of using the ground the entire way through the swing and the finish. Right. So now, now I've kind of, and I think to that point. I still think you do an amazing job of that because as an analyst and watching your game, you do a great job of being able to almost, we talk about like two, like a piece of paper and like yep. ripping it because you're using the force from the ground. Right. You do a great job of that, but that's something that you're trying to marginally continue to get better Correct. and better and better. So if I can shorten up this little, it's not really a leg kick. It's more like a leg pump. Mm -hmm. If I can shorten this leg pump um, just a hair, and that will give me more time, allowing me to see the ball uh, for an extra. A little bit longer. Yep, exactly. So truly, I'm seeing the ball. Watch my head movement. Okay. Even though I saw this well, this is a really good. So my head movement, I want it to be here as long as possible. But because of this stride, my head's moving down, which changes my eyes on the ball. And then my eyes are going to go forward and down. So mm. you see that. So it started here and then it right. was there. Right. So you, if your head's moving, the ball's going to move. Right. So yep. you can't, no one is perfect. There's still head movement in every swing, but I want to be able to minimize that to allow myself to track the ball longer. And it's crazy to me because obviously you're always trying to make adjustments. You're always trying to get better in a sense. Right. And even that's a that's a bomb, like, right? <laughs> like, but you're still trying to figure out how can I be more consistent at doing that move? Sustainable over, consistency. Over. That's yes. it. So like, this game was a. I mean, it was a sick game, but over the course of the season, things happen where you just foul a ball straight back and it hits off the screen. It's like, right. I was right on that. Where yes. it's like, where it's like, how? And when you're in the batter's box, you're like, God, how the hell? Whatever. <laughs> and then that. and then. You because you feel on it, it's like that ball was supposed to be like that yes. pitch should have been capitalized you on. No, so I want to be able to create, I want to be able to create sustainable, like sustainable, consistent movements where I'm I'm way more quiet and and just shorten up my movement, mm. oh, shorten my movements overall. Wow, and I think that's 
that goes along with being able to answer the tunneling, right? Yep. And if we're talking about tunneling, pitchers being able to use that same plan of the pitchers, of the pitches, fastball, slider, whatever, split, um, you know, change up, all that stuff helps you to be able to see that pitch a little bit longer, yep. which is can be the difference between a backside homer and maybe a rollover. Exactly. So I think that's that's amazing, man. Absolutely. Um, what about from a from an upper body standpoint? Is there is there anything that you're specifically trying to think about working on? Because I you you went here, you're right? And, and that's something I see you do before the game too. Is like or before the at bat is kind of like seems like you focus on trying to okay. It's almost almost the opposite of what you do a lot of the times, right? Driving the ball out. But like there seems to be there's a focus. Okay, stay, is it staying inside or what? It yeah. So staying inside, but also some people um, like to be what they call it on top. But like I like to call it like being on plane with the baseball. Mm -hmm. So or or being the being behind and on plane with the baseball. So I'm working inside because if something comes inside at the last moment, like her sinker, I'm gonna have freedom to be able to pull my hands in. Mm. But here, I wanna have good direction inside, basically to, at City, I think that basically at the 380s in like right center. And the gap. Just, just uh, yeah, just left of the bullpen. So I'm here and then I'm basically like, I'm gonna blister this ball through the 380 sign to mm. big, big part of the field. Yeah. Now, uh, that brings me up to, a drill that I've seen you do in the past, right, to where you get the T almost to the side, and, and I'll bring this T here, right. It's almost like to the side of you, right. Yep. And then you're going, almost trying to hit it into the cage. Yeah. So what I'll do here, I mean, let me go back here. I think it's a little earlier here. Yeah, this is a really good drill. I I, I was uh, taught in uh, in high A, and I and for me, I think this is really key for direction. Mm. Um, I mean, direction and staying inside the ball. Um, I I think it's awesome because it's it's more to create um, create that feel of always being inside. I know getting I'm talking in. with Todd about it, and and getting in that correct slot where you're making that move consistently it's it's all about tightening things up and being consistent i mean that's the feel i want to be behind it the whole way and on plane with it, the base it ball. almost looks like you're using the short bat with how tight you're being inside yep, that's exactly it i want to be tight close to my body and then once you reach to the point of contact you're in your full like you have full leverage behind the baseball and you can extend through and create that buggy whip. Is that something that you still work on or 100%. is that something okay? That's 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 daily routine. Okay, daily routine. And that's this is before the game. How many are we what we trying to do? Just get a quick feet like getting a feel before until until it's until you can repeat it like mm. four or five, six times. Are you a big tea guy? Love or? tea. Okay. Love tea. I, I love the tea too. And I felt like it was it disciplined me enough to where, okay, if I can't go ten right back through the middle or 10 to the right or I can't if I can't dictate where this ball is going to go then how am I going to do it doing flips how am I going to do it overhand how am I going right. to do it when I got 97 coming I think the T that's what I love the T for right I I think for me like I've as my career has kind of progressed having an, an intent and having the feel is more important than direction and carry the baseball mm. if you make the good move if you can repeat, 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 the things will translate. It'll take care of itself. Exactly. Hit the wow. ball. That's exactly like, you know, the good old saying, hit the ball where it's pitched. Yeah. Just take your swing, create your move, and then wherever it goes, it goes. Now, from a power standpoint, because everybody wants to know where does the power come from. For you, mm -hmm. let me ask you this first. Is that something that's always been a part of your game? So, going, even yeah. going from a younger age. So I think power, people think home runs. Yeah. But when I think power, I think of, uh, I just think of like how hot is the ball coming off the bat? Because mm -hmm. like if, I mean, if I hit a ball like John Carlos did, he hit, his singles are hit. I think his hardest balls hit, I think ever was like what, like 123 yeah, or whatever. And it was a single. Right, yeah. So I think strength is just, or not strength, it's like you're combining strength with accuracy. Mm -hmm. So, like, baseball power, home runs come from hitting the ball perfectly on the sweet spot and just having either, like, some sort of quickness or have some sort of, some sort of strength behind it right. to create that 
that exit velocity. I think chasing exit velocity the right way isn't maxing out on your swing. It's being accurate with your sweet spot. Is that something that you've, is that something that we have backwards though? Like, I mean, cause there are obviously young players today that are chasing exit velo, right? And that's something that- There's a correct way to chase on, it. That's right? a, that's a correct, there's a, a correct way to chase it. And that's like taking your swing, uh, like 70 in the cage, you could probably take it 60%, um, like 60, 65% and BP go to 70 in the game. You should probably only try and swing 80%. Mm -hmm. And you create that um, exit velocity by hitting the ball in the sweet spot. No home runs hit off the handle. Right. No home run is hit off the, the cap of the bat. Every right. homer is hit off the, the sweet spot of the bat. Yeah. That's, and, and I think you simplify it in a great way because that's kind of what I've seen you do pregame too is that's the that's the stop drill that's the i know you we yeah. probably went by it yeah right right here you can show my he knows uh, he knows my video better than me right now you can show my beautiful bunting skills if you want <laughs> okay yeah what, <laughs> now what oh uh, yeah do you even when's the last time you even bunted uh i think eighth grade but <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, it's, uh, I, I, I practice bunting. Yeah, you never, you never know. know. Yeah. First and third, you take that free steak. <laughs> now, yes, the hat, the kind of the half swing drill, right? The no finish. Right. So I don't like to call it a half swing because, um, just because the whole purpose of the drill is to be connect, like have your body totally connected. You're taking your full, sw you're taking your full swing intent but you are stopping right at the point of contact so you're not you're not if you look here like i'm not swinging my hardest but i'm still swinging with intent right i, I missed it yeah so the whole drill is to have sweet spot accuracy and that that mm. i mean that's consistency yeah like if you're if you're consistent on the sweet spot you're gonna rake like right. the best players um i mean yeah you get like your soggy little hits or you get your little dumpers but right the 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 players who are on the sweet spot of the bat the most consistently are going to be your best players of that year. And, and I mean, if we're being more technical, more analytical, barrel percentage is something that you're always in the 90th percentile of, and and doing a great job of getting to the barrel, hitting balls hard. Right. Um, and barrel, I think uh, I know that's a stat in, in analytics yes, thing, but yes. uh, I I think that there needs to be like something like, like a sweet spot percentage or mm -hmm. because a barrel, it's a, it's a large, well, area. there is sweet spot percentage and you usually pretty high on that too. Love that. And that's, that's a real thing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, there is. And oh. I think, um, you talking about going from point A to point B, I've heard you talking about being able to get from start to almost connect is what you're most focused on. Right. And like the finish will take care of itself. Yes. And I think that that's, I mean, we see that consistently with you. And I think a lot of people think power and they think muscle, they think big, they think strong movements. And, it, it helps for and sure. Yeah, obviously. But I think you talking about the little movements and the details in your swing are some of the things that have allowed you to have consistent power. If I'm, if I'm Absol not right. Absolutely. I think, I think, uh, like any, for any young kid, like watching like this, like ultimately, like if you hit the ball in the sweet spot. Like that's, that's how you, that's how you create your exit velo. Right. Like you can't create exit velo off, off the label. You can't create exit velo off the cap, hit the ball in the sweet spot and the thing will go. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, we just got a couple, couple more here. Um, oh, here you can see the, so that's a big leg pump. Yeah. So that's in 2019. Yeah. A little bit older. I was going to ask you about the adjustment or the, maybe the kind of simplifying the movement what made you decide to go you were a little bit higher and then obviously last year a little bit shorter with it so the uh, honestly the game like mm. the game dictates the adjustments where it lets you, the game lets you know really quick so i didn't really change too much from uh 2019 to 2020 i mean different year um that's nasty though so i really like that i mean that was off of I don't know. Except there's nationals. I don't remember who this was off of. I know his walkout song though. <laughs> yeah, I think that's. Oh, that was off the. I don't know. I'll forget. I I remember the homer. I I see his face, but I don't. I. 
but anyway, so the this right here, yes. I, that's what I want to avoid now. So my hips pointing at the picture, my hands are about to flow up to that uh, power position. So I I really like this, but I I was I'm pretty sure I was selling out right here. Mm, you're like I, I know I know I know I know what I'm getting. Right. We we going we go we going. Big. Yes. If it shows if it shows up, boom, I'm on. Right. But. So right here, like this is, if I had to critique anything, mm -hmm. if my foot is off the ground this much this year, like I, I'd be like, yes, great result, but that's like, that's I want to be able to, do. exactly. Mm. Not that I'm mad at the result, sick, homers are awesome, but right. I want for every, so for my first at bat, second, third, possibly fourth and fifth, like I want to be able to stay connected as possible. Homers like are, are just happy accidents. I want to be there like, be of, be ready to go on. That's like, man, I should have hit that ball in the gap, or man, that ball should have been hit head high through the infield. Right. Or like, there's certain pitches where you can't handle if you're selling out. Right. So I want to be. I think I think high fastball a lot of the times too. Like, yeah. Like, what is your mentality against a pitch that we're seeing more and more of? Right. Is mm -hmm. going is that high velocity that, fastball? That super ride that, ball. That's riding. Yeah. How do you do you? Because I remember myself kind of telling myself, okay, either. To try to stay on top, which we know the barrel doesn't stay on top, but right. thinking try to stay on top or kind of being able to lower that pitch, get make sure that pitch stays down. What What is your thought process against guys doing that? I mean, it depends on what's a strike that day or not. Like if mm -hmm. he's got it, like if he's got it and he's and he's like hitting that uh, consistently, like just right above the belly button and it's and catchers catching it well and mm -hmm. it's a strike, then I mean, hey, that's going to be a tough one and you got to. There's a, I, I say it as a joke, but there's a lot of things to it, but you got to buckle the seatbelt on that high fastball. Buckle hmm. the seatbelt. Mm. Even though it's a total stupid saying, it's, it's, it's No, that, made, funny, that makes sense. But almost like there's a feel where you have to feel like you're basically chopping at it. Right. Even though you're not going to in the right. game, but right. it's you have to swing above the ball. If it looks like it's here, it's actually here, and really you're just matching the plane of the ball. Right, yeah. There's a really good um, – yeah, I got a, I got a couple of those where I have to feel that I'm legitimately tomahawking like coming or, or, down or chopping on down baseball. on the ball. Yeah, and I and that, but I feel like that is kind of a thought process because you're tr are naturally, especially someone that has some loft, a little bit of that, you know, the barrel being able to get under the baseball and drive it. Right, like that might be something that you have to think about a little bit more and be more cons. Um, yeah, because I'm a very like my mechanics are in swing cues are rotational. So hmm. I have to think like almost behind the baseball or on top anyway. So I have to be super, super extra on top. So, for example, wait, wait, hold on. Let me ask you well, not to interrupt, but swing cues are rotational as opposed to directional or? linear linear. OK, so there are certain things where linear guys I know like okay so teacher man he's like okay you got to get judge this. judge's guy just so people know right. judge's guy so he so judge may have like he has great mechanics but he may ha he may have a linear swing but he's working on the ultra ultra extreme side of the rotation of the rotational side to get him in that middle ground okay. for me yeah i if i think like the only person i think that i have to there's only two pitchers I have like, man, I gotta I'm just gonna try and hit a pop up to home plate. Hmm. Uh on like heavy sinker guys. Those are Blake Trinan and uh Logan Webb because okay. they got heavy sink, heavy right. run that oh and that's uh, coming diving in on you. Yeah, like oh bruised our gratterall. That's another yes, guy. Yeah. So I have 100 to hundred miles an hour bowling. Yeah. Yeah, bowling ball. So it's like I have to think like this way because it's it's got that that heavy run and sink hmm. down. Um, so like even, so a feel is not real. That's just like your, Hey, I got to get it up. I got to be inside it. Right. Like there's, I can go on and on with different pitchers. It's like, you got to have a different, you got to have a different club in your bag for, for different guys with different mm, repertoires. Yeah. And it, and it's, it's easier said than done completely. Too, yes. Right. Because obviously you're trying to catch up to what may not just be the bowling ball sinker at 98, 97 miles an hour, but there comes the slider when you're thinking about that too right. sometimes. So that's why like tunneling, like shutting down areas, like where, yeah, if if something ends up here, great, but this is could be a trap area. You mm. like that's that's the art of game planning. That's the art of knowing what you can do and can't. Um, and then also too, like knowing what you're seeing, like, because I'm I might be looking at something and mm -hmm. 
like let's say francisco he's like hey his his whatever isn't that good today or it's like hey you're gonna see it and then if i don't see it i'm like what is going on so like <laughs> again like everyone's different like yes yeah hey, he must be seeing this guy a little bit better than me today right right um that's yeah that so could be like, a factor for sure so like perception is a th- is a real thing and then also to feel feel is never real it's because like what we're building like especially now in the off season mm-hmm. it's it's that just consistent mechanic and, and swing cue where you can do that on on repeat any day you yeah. can wake up out of bed and do it wow and i love that you say building because obviously it's always a foundation you have a foundation right and it's like continuing to find ways to put things together right to make you as most as, as successful as possible yeah i won't really take any merit in i mean i I don't really take any merit in my any any of my work or not work, but results until like the last week, week and a half of spring training. Cause mm-hmm. like the whole point of spring, it's it's just they're scrimmages and you get to play a team in another jersey. That's right, it. Right. Um But you individually are always focused I'm work, on I'm what working you're something. working on. It's like I gotta I gotta focus up on this is this is what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. Like, okay please, Lord, please let there be a, a first and third one out today. And I want to get, I want to, I want to get right so I can capitalize on, on this. And it's right. like, once you get that situation in the game, how do I execute? I execute by getting a pitch where I want. Mm-hmm. I want, I want to have great swing decisions and I want to be able to to do my move or when I say do my move, it's, I want to get loaded and be efficient to the baseball. I want to get there and meet the ball at contact. I love that. I love that. And you, and you do a good job of kind of simplifying what your terms mean because i think that's important too is like if i'm we're talking to an audience especially that's trying to understand hitting Mm -hmm. i want to know what pete alonzo is thinking because i want to know what makes him special and i think that that's pretty cool let me ask you this from a plate standpoint say this is our plate right Mm -hmm. and say it say it's like this to you Mm -hmm. are you looking for without giving away any of your secrets what what are you focused on looking for as far as most of the time. I know guys are different. No, it depends. Right? I mean, ultimately I'm just looking for something in the in the heart of the plate. In the middle. Yeah. Dead dead middle and I just wanna like blister it uh, to right center field head mm. high. That's it. I wanna burn a hole in the second baseman's glove. That's it. Yeah. I love that. That's I mean that and middle's gotta be focused because like you said earlier, it's it's a pitch that we see the mis- most of the mistakes. Yep. And you, and a lot of times, for some reason, we may not be ready, we miss it or whatever, but that's got to be the pitch we hit. 100%. If it shows that. up, you go. I love that, man. I love that. Well, hey, I think that's about really all I got. I, wanna, I want to ask you for just advice for players at home. If they want to be in Pete Alonzo's shoes one day, they want to get to the point to where you're at to have the success that you've had, mm-hmm. what is a piece of advice or what would you leave lasting for them to know? So thing that in, in my career, the just overall advice, you got to earn it three times. Um, if you do it once, uh, it's could be, it's like, oh, you get luckier and it's an accident. You do it twice. It's like, oh, can you do it again? You got to do it. Earn everything three times, whether that's kids wanting to, to make a team or like kids trying to go to college or, or get drafted or even kids trying to go from college to uh, get a chance to play professional yeah. baseball. And then minor league kids trying to make it to the big leagues. You got to earn it three times. You got to earn it three times over. Um, and then honestly, like simple, see ball, hit ball in your area. And then um, offensively, and when you're hitting, just hit the ball in the sweet spot. Earn it three times over. I love that. And you've heard it straight from the three-time all-star Pete Alonso, yep. man. I appreciate you coming yeah. through. Thanks, Chris. A lot of fun, man. Thank you.